Okay, cool. So I'm going to be talking to you guys about my favorite topic ever, which is social enterprise. Then, how do social enterprises work? So your social enterprise has to have all of these components. You need to innovate and find the solution for the community that you're targeting. You need to find the market that you're going to be selling your product and service. You need to have a profit. You need to do what you love. And also, you need to stay 100% true to your mission. So purpose above profit always, but you need to make sure that your organization has enough money coming in so you can continue operating, growing, and continue having an impact in this um, community. So social enterprise is defined as a business that has specific social and environmental objectives serving as its primary purpose. So purpose above profit. However, they need to seek to maximize the benefits of society and the environment while ensuring a profitable and financially sustainable business model. So you're not building an, a charity where you survive just on donations. And even if you are to build a charity, you still need to have a good relationship with your donors. So you always have money coming in. So they use the power of the marketplace. They sell products and or services to solve oppressing society um, or press, most press most pressing um, societal problems. So you need to understand what problem are you solving, but you need to make sure that purpose is about profit. However, you need to have a sustainable revenue model so you can survive because you're gonna be creating jobs. And once this community becomes a little bit dependent of you, you wanna be able to help them ongoingly. And let's talk about, we'll talk about sustainability and impact afterwards. So I wanted to share with you guys, this is just a quick video that talks about different social enterprises. And to just to give you guys some inspiration on things that you guys could be Socks. doing. We all wear them, so we all spend our money on them. But do you ever think about how that money gets used afterwards? No, I didn't either. When you buy a pair of these socks, this company gives one pair to a homeless person in the UK. How brilliant is that? That's because they're a social enterprise. They take the profits from you buying the socks and instead of giving them to shareholders, they invest them in helping out people who really need it. What a great idea. If only there were more businesses like that. Well, there are. There are nearly 80,000 social enterprise businesses in the UK. They use their profits to make a difference to people's lives where you live and all around the world. Remember, we have a choice about where we spend our money and then how that money gets used. We can choose to support businesses like this to make a difference on issues that matter to us. And it's not just socks. Uh, this is a lovely scarf made by a company that supports women coming out of sex trafficking and footballs. This is helping with employment in African areas. Secret pillow. This is helping women in cut off isolated areas. This is beer supporting prostate cancer. And now this is a wash bag made out of fire hose that supports the fire service. This is coffee supporting homelessness. This is the big issue. Well, it's the big issue. Uh, this is chocolate supporting cocoa farmers and their communities. That's helping orphans. This one's Welsh. And it, uh, well, just click the link. Cool, right? So there's lots of um, social enterprises you can get inspired, but it's about you solving a problem, understanding how you're going to have an impact in the community. So one big problem that I see a lot of social entrepreneurs making is they're scared of making money. They think money is bad. So regardless of what business you're making, you need to have money coming in. And if you're offering a good product, you need to charge because customers are willing to pay more if it has an impact. So around Christmas this year, I was in the Philippines and literally every single gift that I got given was linked to social enterprise. So it was brownies baked by the nuns that supported people in poverty. It was um, hand soap built um, to take women out of poverty. Like it was like I got given probably like almost a hundred gifts and it was all linked to solving problems. And I could see that by the packaging, they were more expensive than a normal product that you can buy in a shopping center. But people are willing to buy, and especially for gifts. So when you're building a business, don't be scared of charging the right amount for it because you need to charge the just enough so that people can buy it and you can have enough money to operate the social enterprise and have the impact that you want to have. So it's very important for you to, yes, have a purpose, purpose about profit, but profit is super important because you're not a charity, you are a business that is a social enterprise that needs to have a revenue model that is very well structured and sustainable so you can continue growing your movement. So how do you start? So my suggestion is always, always, always think big, but start as small as possible. Because by you starting small, you're able to test and not fail. So Professor, um, Professor Mohamed Yunus, the Nobel Peace Prize winner. So he started a social enterprise and now he won 
the Nobel Peace Prize, with just $27. So he identified that Bangladesh was the third poorest country in the world, and he is originally from Bangladesh. And he just went, how are we going to take these people out of poverty if they're so poor they haven't been registered? Therefore, the government can't give them support because they don't know they exist. They can't apply for jobs because they don't have a, res a registration. They can't go to a bank because banks is not going to lend them money because they looked like they weren't going to pay the money back. So Professor Yunus took $27 out of his pocket and gave it to a community of women and taught them a little bit about um, micro, um, so they taught him a little bit about social entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship and built a micro loan system and he has taken 7 million people around the world out of poverty. So if Professor Yunus could start with $27, imagine what you could do now with the knowledge of social business and social enterprise which when he created was non-existent. So what I want to share with you guys is when you're building a business, so what I was talking to you guys about Think big, but start small. Have a humongous goal. Have a goal of like eliminating poverty or hunger, whatever it is that you feel a connection with. But start as small as possible. So for example, during COVID, a lot of people have lost their jobs. So if you want to build an employment agency, don't go out and hire 10 people, rent the flashiest office in Sydney. Get three friends of yours or three contacts that have lost their jobs and try to help them find a job. Then once you understood what worked best for them, start running workshops and help 30 people a week find a job. And then you can build some templates. Once you've done that, look at building, maybe putting that information into a blog or into an app or someone else's platform and look at helping three, 300. And then you look at helping all of the population. But you need to look at every single problem. You are problem solving, but start as small as possible and test it and give feedback but also when you start small, you're able to collect data and build effective systems. And if you start too big, which is a problem that a lot of social entrepreneurs go, I'm gonna change the world, but they think so big, they're not even able to start because you can't help every person in the world find a job just because they lost a job in COVID. But if you start with three people and then you progress it to 30, then you progress it to 300, you within a month could have a very interesting business um, structure set up. Let me just move this. So a little bit about me. So I've been a social entrepreneur since the age of nine. I'm 31 now, so now I feel old, but I started at the age of nine. So I was born in Brazil and when I was nine, I lived in South Africa. And that's where I started my first social enterprise. And my first social enterprise was teaching. So I was fundraising for books because I wanted to give everybody the right of fighting for what they deserved. And at that time in South Africa, having moved from Brazil to South Africa, I saw that people were getting judged and getting different opportunities according to the skin color. And I didn't think that was fair. So I started this little fundraiser to um, collect books so that everybody could learn how to read and get the knowledge to fight for the rights. Then from there, I lived in Mexico City where we started a community focused um, skateboard company. And by the time I moved to Australia, I had run a lot of social entrepreneurial projects. So I started a public relations company to help businesses that were socially responsible shine a light and grow through public relations. And we actually, thanks to Rotary, we won Business of the Year in 2011 for some of the projects we were doing here in Australia, but contributing back to Africa. And then late last year, Academy of Entrepreneurs, so the school that I set up, we won Business of the Year. So it's amazing to not only do what you love, but also to have us being recognized so more people can hear about it and be inspired to be social entrepreneurs. Um, I'll show you guys just a little interesting fact. Um, as I was building this presentation for you guys yesterday, I think there was so much like love. Um, I received a phone call from one of Professor Mohammed Yunus, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, who's one of the biggest social entrepreneurs. I received a phone call from one of his closest friends inviting me to present with Professor Mohammed Yunus. So um, on the 28th this month is Professor Yunus's 80th birthday, but because of COVID, his birthday party was canceled and he invited a hundred social entrepreneurial leaders to run online panels with him. So keep an eye, because I'll be presenting with Professor Yunus along with a hundred other social entrepreneurs. So this month, you guys are going to be seeing a lot on social entrepreneurship. I've also presented at Google, Microsoft, HSBC, the United Nations, and all these amazing places that we can get our message across, but also with a lot of governments, such as the Australian government, Brazilian, Colombian, Chilean, French. So I do have a little bit of experience in social entrepreneurship. It's what I love, live and breathe every single day. Um, remember to tag us. So if you're going to take any photo of us presenting, tag us and we will reshare. 
hashtags of the day is boss your future and also you can um, share on um, Facebook Instagram and LinkedIn so add us because we're going to be giving a lot of information around social entrepreneurship in the next month so my focus in the next four weeks is to talk about social entrepreneurship like 90% of the time so if you're as passionate as me about this topic please follow us so you guys can get a lot more information on